Okay, so uh, we're going to share some uh, information about how we're going to roll out recruiting this year. And the big change for this year is that it's going to be PACs running their own recruiting. That is a, frankly, I was kind of shocked today when I found that there were lots of district executives that last year and in past years have had situations where they made contact with the school and they ran a school sign-up night sometimes without any PAC leader participating, which we think is not an optimal way to do things. So we want to switch it around so that our district executives who can recruit better than anybody in the country are empowering PACs to do those school sign-up nights, to re uh, have relations with the schools, to put on a program that is going to fit a recruiting program that's going to fit their needs, their program, what they do. And if district executives are able to engage a district team and then the individual PACs, that turns into a recruiting force multiplier so that we can do so much more and have a better recruiting year overall. So question, why do we put PACs in charge? We had a number of answers to that today. Number one, it's their local program. So who better to know uh, how to recruit? Good PACs we've seen can sell themselves. And if we help more PACs plan for a year of recruiting, they can help sell themselves better too. So we're gonna help PACs put together plans that will be decent programs that families want to join. Also, local PACs know their needs. They're going to know if they have uh, greater needs for parent participation and how they uh, need to get parents involved. We need to let them uh, pitch that to the families that they're recruiting because every PAC is going to have different capacities. Some have dense size packs, some are much bigger. The main issue is for most of them is how many leaders do they have? If they have not enough leaders, that makes it really hard to recruit well. Just you know, think about two common examples. You might have some packs that really only have two youth facing leaders and maybe they have a, you know, 15 or so kids. That's way different from a pack that has 15 youth facing leaders. And only one of those can really handle a large pack. And when you look at 70 kids in a pack, like this picture here, two leaders can't lead that. But oh, goodness gracious, if you look at some of the recruiting reports from years past, you, we've seen time and time again, uh, 70 kids being recruited into packs that might just have a few leaders. And frankly, as district teams and district executives and membership teams and commissioners are working with their PACs, you're going to get a sense of what PACs really can do. Some PAC leaders that are running PACs are great at leading a den-sized group. They may not be the same ones in that picture on the right who can organize a group of 12 den leaders in order to deliver a Cub Scout program because those are completely different skill sets. So that's something where we think that if PACs are supported and coached by district executives and district volunteers, that's going to work out better so that uh, PACs that have the leadership and the organizational skills to be ginormous programs can grow into that. And others, we can help them hopefully get there if they get the right training. Now, how have we done? We rank high in youth recruiting on the basis of the total available youth and the top 100 largest councils in the country. We're number two by percentage of total available youth recruited. Unfortunately, the flip side of recruiting all those youth is we don't do so well at recruiting adults. So we actually have an issue in program and retention. And I think it's related. If we don't have enough adults delivering the program, you have a bigger retention loss. This shows the numbers from 
uh, the end of December of 22 to last summer. And we were much higher than the average, the top 25 uh, councils by total available youth in the number of uh, youth that just went away between fall recruiting and sticking with a pack after recharter. So this is one of the reasons why we are looking at this change. Another reason why we're looking at the change is uh, a lot of PACs are actually doing it because the recruiting resources we've had out there, PACs that have looked at that, have actually said, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's apply this plan of have a calendar of fun activities. Let's promote ourselves. Let's get leaders in place. And it's working for them. Another reason for the change is it costs more at sign up. Uh, in 2019, you know, eight bucks in October and a family could take a flyer on whether or not a scouting program would happen. That's not a big sacrifice. But last year, 105 bucks in October just for the national BSA fee for 12 months. Boy, a family really has to look carefully at whether or not that investment's going to make sense whether or not that PAC has a program that's worthwhile, whether they have leaders who can deliver the program, because otherwise, why, why blow 105 bucks on scouting? So now there is a counter to this. District executives can do recruiting better. We know that. We've seen our district executives do a fabulous job at getting those youth signed up. But we think they can also coach well because we think Superman doesn't just go in and save the day, but Superman can be a leader of others and can actually uh, be part of what we hope is going to be a much more dynamic professional and volunteer collaboration as we go into this year of recruiting. Uh, so the new professional recruiting role is to teach and coach. Uh, develop a team of volunteers who can also join the uh, the district executive in teaching and coaching PACs about how to deliver a program and recruit into that program. So that's what we want our uh, super district executives to be focused on. We want them to have a team. So every district should have a membership chair and there's other roles that make up part of that. Uh, recruiting coordinators and coaches who can help coach pack uh, volunteers, new unit people who are going to start up packs and have impact guides who will help units get started so that families can bring the Cub Scout program into a school that didn't have Cub Scouting before. And there are others who may not think that they're on the membership team, like commissioners or trainers or those who plan program and activities for district or do district communications and websites and e-blasts and newsletters, they can all participate and be really important players in the uh, membership mindset that we hope we have in the Atlanta Area Council this year. There's other possible district roles that you'll see in the uh, the uh, membership job description and the different parts of what a membership job might be. Some of these are listed here, like I call it district test drive event organizers. You, sometimes we call those uh, get out and scout events or delivering the promise events. But if you're putting on events for families to come check out and test drive Cub Scouting, that's important. That can be a great way to convince families to join. Having people who are just going to advise units about how to put on fun events for recruiting can be useful. Uh, people to make flyers that can help units promote themselves can be useful. If you have individuals in the district who are willing to scour the web and look at the various Be a Scout sites your units have, they can look at that and debug some of those and let your units have better portals to reach out to families who are looking for scouting. There's other roles. We have some districts that have a dire need to have interpreters. 
to show up at sign up events and get units moving because some of our schools, most of the parents may not speak English. So units are gonna need in certain districts and certain neighborhoods interpreters. So there's other ways to uh, you know, get individuals involved. And although there's a lot listed here and a lot in the uh, job descriptions, don't worry about this because you're not gonna find all of the, you're not gonna fill all of these roles. But the more you do fill, the better it's going to be for your district membership outcomes. So some district superhero teaching tools are the Atlanta Area Council recruiting resource pages, the Guide to Cub Scout Family Recruiting itself, which has in the back of it a plan and script for sign-up events. And we have as part of the plan a coaching for sign-up nights playbook so that district executives and uh, knowledgeable membership committee members can coach up PAC volunteers about how to work with their schools and put on successful sign-up nights. And uh, last, another uh, resource are the list of fun, simple, easy activities that PACs can put on. So we mentioned the uh, guide to recruiting. That's somewhat revised this year, but it's fairly similar. The steps are the same, building a calendar of fun activities, promoting that, and eventually you build a foundation so that when you do have a school sign-up night, you've got something that people want to join. I'm just going to flip through these slides. We're going to do these a little bit more next week with PAC volunteers, but number one, our first step is have a calendar of activities that families want to do. They look at that and say, that sounds fun. They're much more likely to join you, especially if you've started to uh, nail down and fully bake some of those plans for activities. So as you do get a set of activities, you want to be sure your PACs know how to get the word out to current members, people who almost joined last year, uh, you know, friends of families who are your net promoters within your packs. There's lots of ways to get the message out. That's a long list of ways. Nobody does it all, but the more you can do whatever works for you in getting the word out in your school uh, community, your church community, your neighborhood community is going to benefit a pack. Having a Be a Scout pin, I mentioned how that's important. That We're going to focus on that a little bit as well. Third step, recruiting leaders. I don't want to say it's the third most important thing, but it sort of follows the first two, because if you have great activities and you share that information with families, you'll probably hear back from some families who are going to give you some positive feedback and tell you things like, wow, we would love to go to the Okefenokee Swamp. I went there when I was a kid. And maybe you're going to find in that positive feedback, somebody who could be one of your new leaders to help get your pack going. So we have a lot of ideas about that, and this is really why it's the most important thing, and that is that the number one reason why families leave scouting is their den or pack had poor leadership. Maybe they were not welcoming. Maybe they were overtaxed. Maybe they had too much to do. Maybe, you know, who knows what the reason is, but that's what the surveys say, and that's why we need to recruit more leaders. And we have lots of ways to get that done and ideas about ways to recruit. It's not going to work for everybody all the time, but uh, the, you will find some ways to, number one, create a culture of leadership, to communicate with adults, to you know use recognition, to right-size your jobs and your org chart and make jobs easy enough for any parent to step in and find some way to help, but not overtax people so that they burn out and leave. A lot of ideas there, and there's videos about that too. Fourth step is uh, having good school and community presence, building relationships, doing some service projects so that the school's going to love the Cub Scout pack, and uh, getting that word out so that you can use that as a way to attract uh, attention to your pack and attract new families to your pack. 
we want our districts to help our PACs build great relationships with their school contacts from principal to janitorial staff, teachers, secretaries, administrators. We want that so that we get better access because if our PAC parents have good relationships with the schools and we leverage that, that's gonna be more powerful than just having a district executive uh, get in touch with schools. With that foundation, sign-up events can be fabulous because families will see when they go to a school night or a fun joining event that here's a PAC that has got a plan. They are doing fun things. We are meeting families. We, are, we want to be part of this group. And that's what our goal is because we want PACs to get it in their heads that every fun dinner pack family event can be a joining event where they make good peer-to-peer, parent-to-parent, kid-to-kid contact and hopefully decide we want to be part of your pack. And those big sign-up events, we'll talk about that a little bit more about how that's shifting, but the nature of it really doesn't change much. You can have a big presentation with a series of presenters to everybody or station to station presentations where different topics get addressed by different volunteers. And then we know with the, you know, just the price point, we're gonna need follow-up because not everybody who goes to sign up night's gonna say yes. So we need to be sure we follow up with people and invite them to the next fun pack or den event and uh, reel them in when they have a good time and meet other families. So having a solid calendar of activities is also how the steps to successful recruiting end. With that, let me pause for a second and ask Ben, do we have discussion questions in the chat? Not as of yet. There, there's one question that just posted, but it's, it's not relevant right now. We'll probably catch it at the end. Okay. So I want to spend a little more time here. That, that I flew through that. We're going to go through uh, that in much more detail uh, for unit leaders next week. But I want to talk about our year-round approach because we're not looking at recruiting as something we just do at back-to-school time anymore, uh, but rather it's something that can happen year-round. I mean, it might as well if you join whenever you join. Uh, family's going to be paying for 12 months, so... We're looking at it in terms of three seasons. Right now, we're about to approach the end of a pack year where kids have finished rank and you know they get their rank badges. And a lot of times, packs shut down and they just don't do anything. But we want to encourage packs for a variety of reasons to use the spring and summer to relax, do super simple activities. Uh, and also retool and plan for the upcoming program year. And with a change in Cub Scout advancement requirements, uh, it's going to be a big time for retooling anyway, even if we didn't focus on this. We described fall or back to school time, August, September, October, as sort of your rollout and recruit time, where you're rolling out a new program year, wrapping up recruiting of additional leaders, getting your program launched, and then we also think of winter as a recruiting time for a sort of crazy idea that we don't want to have retention losses. We don't want to see attrition over the winter, but rather if we do a good job recruiting leaders, rolling out a program in the fall, engaging them, giving them the tools to succeed, when they run a program in the winter, they will retain scouts and maybe even recruit more because if your families are enjoying their den, they're enjoying their pack activities, they hopefully will be willing to tell their friends who didn't join up, hey, we're doing great things. My kids learning great stuff. This, they're, this, the pack leaders are imparting great values. This is a worthwhile program. We hope you join. And we hope that we will see more joining during the uh, winter advancement time when PACs and DEMs are really operating 
uh, their own program. So let's look at the seasons in a little more detail. Spring and summer, time to relax and retool. You will end up seeing a uh, summary of how spring and summer can be a time for just fun family, friends, and adventure, not times for agendas and detailed requirements and hard programs to put on, but just relax, have a cookout, have a bike ride, go fly a kite, go fishing, you know, visit places, do field trips. Super simple, something that a lot of families will enjoy if you put it out there. And it's also a great time for leaders to just relax and get to know families. Because if you get to know families, you're going to have the opportunity to know the current, your, you know, this past year's families. You're going to know more about uh, what they can do. They will have a few months under their belt of seeing Cub Scout activities, and you can get them involved maybe for the upcoming year. So that's the recruiting element, but really the relax element is Cub Scouting can be super complicated, and what I have in the background here is, of course, the fun, simple, easy requirements that will come in next year. But just looking at that chart, there's a lot to it. So we want to take time to relax and enjoy and allow leaders and, fa and families to just do things together. Because when they do, you can get them involved. And, you know, not only can you pick up new leaders from current non-leader families, but if you pull in new families at a cookout or other event, you might get ideas from them about places to go and things to do that you may want to bake into your, uh, have your packs bake into their pack program. Now for districts, spring and summer, be great to have communication about fun, simple, easy activities that could be done. We have a whole web page about that. Uh, to get recruiting resources out to packs, including the recording of next week's recruiting video. There will be coaching opportunities, which we'll talk about in a second. Roundtable can also promote recruiting resources, not to be a recruiting kickoff, but at least to have a, an advert for upcoming district recruiting kickoffs, but to be sure that people know that the resources are there so that units can do their own unit run recruiting. And district committees can, you know, look at how that those plans are rolling out. What district events are you going to have that'll be get get out and scout events for uh, PACs to participate in? How you're doing at recruiting membership volunteers, and uh, otherwise also looking at new unit needs because starting new units at schools that don't have their own PACs will be a big part of that. We do encourage districts, membership teams, and district professionals to check in to see how scouts are doing, uh, to get some data about like how many kids are participating, how many adults do you have. One of the reasons for that is we've lost a important data point because with 12-month signups starting last August, Everybody who signed up last fall is still on a roster. So we don't see the retention losses like we used to. The only way you're going to know how many kids are really participating is by having those conversations with pack leaders. And from that, you can be sure that you know how a pack is going to be operating in an upcoming year. When will they plan to have, you know, uh, den meetings and pack meetings or pack activities so that you can see how they fit. And frankly, this is useful in a district if you know how many, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and weekend packs you have, you can hopefully then help people find a day of the week that's going to work for them when they are searching for a pack at any time of the year. Now, Relax and Retool does include Retool, some of which is work for planning, and that is going to be big if you uh, when you have district recruiting rallies where you roll out how pack run recruiting will be and give uh, coaching to your packs about how to be ready to recruit and have a product that families want to buy. So a summer check in done by a district executive or membership team member is going to be an opportunity to look 
to be sure they're ready. Do they have a calendar of activities? Are they promoting it in the pack and beyond? How are they doing at leader recruiting? Do they need help? Do they need tips? Uh, you know, that can be, you know, an important analysis because if they don't have leaders lined up, you know, by June, July for the upcoming year, that's going to be hard to do a full launch of a uh, robust and large PAC program. So that gives you the opportunity to see what PACs need, also gives you the opportunity to be sure that they are going to be ready to run their own recruiting. So when we get to fall, really August, that's the time to, you know, we roll out and recruit. Uh, and recruiting doesn't just happen at school sign-up nights. It can happen at those June and July fun events. It can happen at the pre-first day of school registration days, meet and greets, meet the teacher days. Uh, I know of a pack in South Fulton who a few years ago decided to get a lot of parents at those meet the teacher days and they signed up 70 families that day and a lot of leaders just by having those one-on-one -on -one conversations as families were coming in and out of their uh, meet the teacher day. Having back to the pack fun events as sign-up events plus school sign-up night is are great ways to get people involved. So school sign-up night will be different. It'll in most cases, hopefully, it'll be pack run, professionally coached. The district executive may not even be there if the pack has really got it together. That said, if the pack doesn't have it together, the district executive may be necessary to coach so much that they are there on the school sign up night to be sure everything does run well. A key tool is we have a plan and script for. PACs to tailor to their needs. So while we've written it with a number of options about things like activities and leader needs and uh, what the PAC charges for their local program fees or dues, it is set up so that the PAC should edit that to fit how they do their program, not how some ideal PAC or some different PAC may do their program. And the concept also is no longer do we want joining events, sign up events to be just for people who aren't in the pack yet. We want packs to encourage as many families as possible and as many leaders as possible to attend so that families who are thinking about joining can meet families who are already in the pack. And that becomes a force multiplier because if a new family is sitting with some other families in the second grade, they're going to have that peer-to-peer, parent-to-parent recruiting people who are promoting the pack saying, our kids just love all the activities. We loved our den leader last year. You guys are going to love this. You ought to join. And that's going to mean a lot more than a district executive or one PAC leaders standing up and encouraging people to attend. So that is one of the ways that it'll be different. So action items for districts in the fall, this chart is part of the uh, plan that we've circulated. You know, there'll be things to communicate to leaders. One of the things that becomes super important starting in August is getting leader prospects and new leaders to training so that they can deliver the program making sure that we're promoting the new advancement resources as those are identified and roll out. And as we will probably be supplementing them here in Atlanta to deal with issues like how do you deliver meetings to a mixed den of first, second, and third graders. So that will those will be items that will end up on your district committee and roundtable and communication agendas. Coaching check-ins, as you uh, look at sign-up nights, will often be following up on those issues that were identified in the spring and summer as PAC needs. You know, how are they doing at recruiting? Did they build out their calendar of activities? Do they have some a handout or PAC pamphlet, as we call it, that they can deliver to 
um, families at sign up nights that's going to give them a short and sweet summary of how they're doing. And you also want to use your coaching check ins to, you know, congratulate PACs that did a good job. Share that word in your district. Uh, thank, you know, thank principals and congratulate the school for having such great leaders so that your PAC leaders who you're coaching are going to feel like my work is appreciated here. Winter, run program and retain scouts. So I mentioned why we want to do that, because even in the wintertime, if you're doing an activity, that can be an opportunity for a new family to come check out what you do and be part of how the, uh, of all that Cub Scouting can be. Winter district action items are, you know, just bringing the calendar forward. Training is still going to be important. Uh, building, uh, you know, new district events for scouts to participate in will be important. And being sure that leaders have the resources to put on program. So this is the summary of the seasons. I see we have a few more chats. Uh, do we have any discussion questions, Ben? None. None. Well, then I'll no. roll on, and we will have time for plenty of um, questions. Bert, I, hey, this is Audrey. I have a question. Um, Audrey, I heard I've always got that, time for you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you mention that, you know, it may be some units that where the DE doesn't have to come, which that would be mine. I don't necessarily need the only thing they were there for was to collect money. So how are we going to deal with that? Uh, well, you're going to roll on uh, like you've been rolling on. Uh, as far as collecting money goes, you know, that'll be something that units can do on their own, uh, just as, you know, like if you've been collecting money uh, by check, obviously you'll we'll keep doing that. If you are relying on a card swipe, a lot of units, their pack treasurer will have a square or other device, depending on what your uh, fee collection system is. I think PayPal has a device, other, uh, you know, other uh, companies like well, I that. Guess, have I ways. guess my main concern is that the application fee for brand new people, how is that going to work? Are, are, so you're saying we're supposed to collect the application fees within our own PAX money and then turn the money over to you all? So there Let won't be in. a DE there to collect that night and the applications? Ben, so you want to me, help? Yeah, let me help with it. So first question, first answer to that is we're working out that details. And it also depends. It's unit specific. Um, there's not a universal way to do it. Um, and a lot of it depend on if you're collecting apps online, then it's done for you right there when you go online and join. But the, the answer to your question, Audrey, this is not settled yet. We're still working out, also making sure what the system is cap capable of doing. So stay tuned to that. Um, as far as how to collect the funny the funds, it just depends on your unit and what capabilities you have. But we'll work with you to make sure it's taken care of. Good question. Okay, because I I definitely don't want to be holding on to BSA money. I I don't. Yeah, I'm used no, to, to a DE showing up at the end. Here's the apps. Here's the money. Everything's signed, verified. Yep. Tick 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 tick. Hand it over. Then it's yeah, the ideal hands. situation is to do it online using either QR codes or just directing them to a site to where they pay directly to national. Uh, but it just depends on what the system's able to do at that point. But we'll we'll know more here in the coming months. Okay, thank you. All Good right. Point. Let's uh roll into these what what we call the school playbook for coaching packs. Uh honestly. A lot of this is going to be like those of us who are familiar with uh, the EDGE method from our Scouts BSA troops. The goal of district executives and district membership teams is going to be to explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable PACs to do what district executives used to do on their own at sign-up nights. So that'll involve uh, things like picking the dates. If a unit wants to have a certain date and are able like Audrey's pack is to do their own recruiting and they don't need the district executive there. If the school permits it, you can pretty much pick your date and do recruiting when you want to. 
So I am guessing that we will see uh, more PACs that do their school sign-up nights much earlier in August than they used to. For some districts, and I, Soapstone may be one, I know Southern Crescent is for sure one, that have a lot of schools where sometimes units would be stuck with late September, early October sign-up nights. Hopefully that will be a thing of the past for PACs that know how to recruit if they can, as we put it, free solo on their own. Also, there's pluses and minus to this. I have on here that PACs won't be limited to doing it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, there are a lot of PACs that meet on Monday. Some people might say it's more convenient and a better fit if you do your sign-up night on the night you're meeting. If that's important to the PAC, if that's going to be a draw for current families and potential future families, that can be a positive. I'll point out that a negative of that is it is harder to do a well-timed buzz up because if you're doing a Monday sign up night and relying on a day before or Friday morning buzz up, the buzz may have uh, diminished over the weekend and families may not remember it as much by the time they get to Monday. But if doing your sign up night on your Monday meeting night makes more sense, it's PACs have the power to pick it. We are still subject to, of course, school requirements. They, you can only enter on the days that they say we have staff so that you can enter. And you also have to use common sense, like don't start earlier than six. Don't start later than seven because you want to be cognizant of uh, working people and bedtimes. And make sure that you are in and out in an hour so that you are not getting school staff upset at you. But this is going to give a lot more power to PACs to pick a sign-up approach that they like. Bert, can I jump in real quickly? Sure. Um, good question on the chat was, are the professionals still going to do the buzz-ups? The short answer is yes. Uh, buzz-ups are probably the probably most impactful, effective recruiting method that we use other than flyers. And so, yes, they still will be there. But what we want to do is make sure we work in coordination with the pack if there are some people that can't help do the buzz-ups. Uh, it, it does take a little bit of a training and some things to do an effective buzz up. And we want to make sure everybody is equipped. But to good question. The answer is yes. Uh, staff are still predominantly doing the buzz up, uh, mainly because it's during the day. And most other folks have other jobs that prevent them from doing that. But just wanted to jump in right there while we were talking buzz ups. All right. And we'll have a bit more on buzz ups in a second. But other sign up night tips for coaching. We want district executives and district membership teams to work with their PACs to build a tight script. Again, the script itself that's part of the guide is going to be available in Word. It can be downloaded and edited by the PAC to fit their program. The concept is that your coaching should be to keep it tight so that it is a uh, bang bang program that is delivered ideally in a group by a series of people. Uh, and the reason for having a series of people is that's going to impart on new families that this is not a one person show. This is not just a cub master being the scouting coach, but it's a team of people who are leading this pack so that hopefully new families realize I could be part of this team and I won't have to do it all. It's also important to insist on a tight script and a tight delivery because uh, you can raise your hand if you've ever had somebody go on too long and it's only 743, so I'm not beyond an hour yet. But sometimes there are some scout leaders who go on too long. It's important to coach them and say, that's really counterproductive. Brevity is the soul of wit. You wanna be funny up there. So the script needs to sell what this pack is doing, what they are actually going to deliver so that families are getting the straight scoop. 
Uh, I've mentioned why we want to have multiple leaders. You want to start on time and end on time because that shows you respect families and you are not going to abuse their calendar and their schedules. And stay on the script. You know, questions, you can do general questions at the end of the program and take care of one-on-one -on -one questions after. And P.S., that's another reason to have a whole lot of leaders there so that if individuals do have questions, you've got plenty of people who can answer them and hopefully pull them into your pack. So uh, resources, I mentioned that the Word version of the plan will be on the sign up events page that's part of recruiting resources. It is not there yet. That is a job that is sitting in the inbox of our marketing team and they uh, have promised to get on that this week. So hopefully when we roll out next week, it'll be there. Uh, quick note about BSA fees. If you haven't heard, the annual fee is going up five bucks, youth and adult, but the new member joining fee will be gone as of April Fool's Day this year. And that is not an April Fool's announcement. That is real. Registration fees will still run for 12 months and families will be invited to renew their subscription when 12 months have passed or actually probably even earlier. We don't know what exactly that rollout will look like. We'll certainly know a lot more this summer. Other concepts, support from professionals. Even if they are not at your sign-up night, your professionals will be providing packs with Slime toys to give out to people at sign up night, Cub Scout handbooks for those who sign up and pay, Waffle House coupons, a launch kit example so that pack leaders can demonstrate what you'll, they'll get in the mail. There'll be parent orientations guide, a Brave bookmark, and also as packs request yard signs and standees and stickers and flyers and peer to peer cards. So a lot of that you've seen before, you'll see it again. And where DEs will not be at the sign-up night, you'll just have to arrange to pick them up at a recruiting kickoff or July uh, event, or uh, DEs are driving around your neighborhood all the time. We talk about buzz-ups, and that depends on a variety of things. I hold out the option here that maybe PACs can have a volunteer do a buzz up district. There are some district volunteers who do that. The main issue is, can the volunteer do a tight 90 second buzz up? Can they deliver a good, quick, get kids excited story? And if they can pass that audition, they can get approved to deliver a buzz up. That's way different than letting a, a pack leader participate in a sign-up event, mainly because the, a volunteer going into a school is interrupting the school day. So even if the pack leader says, well, it's my pack and my school, uh, the district cares because if a teacher is upset about a buzz up running too long, that teacher is going to complain to the principal. That principal is going to complain to the superintendent. Now it's a district-wide problem, maybe uh, going beyond district boundaries as a school district may be upset at the Atlanta Area Council for buzz-ups that went too long. That said, if you got volunteers who can do a bang-bang buzz-up, that's a beautiful thing. And one of the ideas, we've got images here of some of the swag that district executives can provide is great idea that came from an October membership breakout. And that is how about if we get pack leaders to put a good buzz up on video on the YouTube and let that be, you know, maybe uh, posted on a school website or broadcast to the school, you know, even if the leader can't be at the school, they could be on the closed circuit TV broadcast at the school and if there's concern about whether they can deliver it live, if you get it on tape in 90 seconds, that can be a great recruiting tool that gets an actual PAC leader out there. Now, PACs will need to bring some stuff. Uh, the two on the upper uh, left there are things they'll have to revise. 
like their pack packet of information, calendar, contact, that sort of thing. We have tools about how to make that happen so that it, it can be done by a pack and the pack's revised script. The yellow highlighted items are items that will be on the sign up events website that packs can download and bring to their sign up events and have available so that they can use them to have a uh, better and more robust sign up night. Other things we want PAC leaders to bring are leaders and parents for peer to peer recruiting. Uh, we talked about a credit card reader, that's a good thing to have. And then maybe a side activity for kids so that they're not distracting the parents. And maybe as an example for parents to see how easy it is to lead a den when we identify a good, easy den adventure plan, uh, that might be good to share with parents so that they can see, oh, I could do this. District executives, I mentioned things they'll bring and there's an image of what may be what the um, handbooks look like. So those arrangements will have to be made. But basically this summer, training PAC leaders to explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable them to plan a program and recruit well is gonna be the job one for district executives and district membership team people in recruiting so that PACs can do their PAC run recruiting on their own and successfully. That'll happen through some recruiting kickoffs in maybe late April, May, June. It'll happen by unit by unit coaching, district messaging about recruiting, maybe membership minutes at round tables, making sure your committee and commissioner understand this new approach. You don't need a commissioner meeting with a PAC leader and saying, oh, I know how recruiting works. Your district executive will schedule a school sign up night and then bring you a stack of applications that she got signed. No, we want all commissioners to understand how recruiting is gonna be done this year so that everybody's on the same page. And the schedule of that, I mentioned kickoffs. We have these events next week. We're having the a Zoom rollout for all Cub leaders, committee and roundtable events with a membership element will should be part of your spring and summer plan, then district kickoffs, and then final school back to school prep parties in July to be sure everybody has materials knows their school assignments, has their dates set, and are ready to roll. And that's what I've got, except questions. Let me chime in just a second. Uh, while people, if you have questions, um, want to cover. I, I did I have a little note section here. Um, and what triggered me, Emily asked a question. She was one that asked about uh, what, you know, is it the responsibility of the unit and the buzz ups? Keep in mind, this is the district team that's on this call. And, and I want to make sure it's clear what your roles are as district membership chairs, new unit chairs, uh, district chairs and commissioners. Like your goal, your goals and objectives are to train and educate the packs and some of y'all have dual purposes you serve in the pack too but it's not just a hey here you go go do what you want um it's a partnership and so it's not going to be okay well here you go pack 10 go do what you want to do uh we'll share with you best practices um different things that we found to be successful the biggest impact we're trying to get across is uh, and Bert's been trying to get me to understand it for about four or five years is we've been really good at just signing people up. But what's happening is our retention is not as strong as we want it to, to be. And our leader recruitment is not as strong as we need it to be. And when a, when a family's sitting up there watching a district executive self scouting, because we hand them some slime or some waffle coupons, uh, and then they sign up that day. And then they are looking to ask a question maybe that night or two days later, who are they going to ask? It's probably going to be whoever they met at the sign up, which would probably be a district executive. 
but with the pack leaders and the district, the volunteers there, they're going to meet the person that's actually going to be running their unit and giving a, a character involved a, a program to their child. And we we hope that this. I, I more than hope. I'm pretty confident that it's going to increase our retention. It's going to increase more people showing up at the next meeting, and it's going to increase the parents stepping up because hopefully leaders are going to sit here and say, you know what, I was in your shoes. I was sitting in the audience just like you are. And this is not a program where you drop your child off. You have to participate. And that coming from an actual leader that did it is so much more powerful than an executive getting up there. So that's the biggest takeaway, the uh, the biggest transition that we are making and wanted to start with you by letting you know and giving you a chance to ask questions to make sure that y'all have everything you need so then you can turn around and then train and get the packs up to speed. Uh, so I wanted to make sure everything was clear, crystal clear on that. Uh, so you know your role and also have a full understanding of why we're doing it. It's not really to take any work off of the district executive because their work's going to be put ahead of time now working with you to train packs. Uh, so they know to not talk way too long. They know to stay within the confines of the of the of what the school was put out for us. Uh, they know not to do it on the night of a PTA meeting. They know to do it at the school, not the church. Um, at all possible, they know not to do it on a Saturday uh, versus a, a school day that people can come right back to the, the school. Um, so that was the main point I wanted to get across there. And then also that what your role is, and Bert hit on it, there's some district meetings coming up that y'all would need to plan uh, starting in May to where it, it really gets all your packs up to speed uh, for the events. And then I'd be interested to see if there was anybody that, that the whole thing on that 28th, that meeting on the 28th, that is for every single Cub Scout pack. So if a pack has eight people on there, great. And I wouldn't mind somehow incentivizing each district to see who can get the most percentage of their packs on the 28th call. Because if you can get them on that call, that's less one-on-one -on -one training and educating you have to do. So I, I'm all ears if someone has a, an incentive you'd like for me to throw out there uh, that we can obviously afford to get like as a prize, what would be a, a reasonable prize for each district. Um, I, I'd obviously go to something like, hey, we'll fund the, we'll cover the cost of food at your, at a round table or something or a, something like that. But let me know, but don't want to distract us from that. Just wanted to share my, my, four cents on the topic. So any questions or anything else to add? I did my best to take roll uh, during the call. It uh, looks like we have a total of 30. We had 37 people take off me and Bert, makes it 35. And then I've asked that the district executives be on just so to reemphasize that this is a partnership of the executives and the, the district volunteers. And uh, we are having an encore encore tomorrow. So if you have any folks that you think uh, would like to be a part of this, let them know. Uh, we obviously are recording it as well that we can play back. And in Bert's famous words, if you do it on YouTube, you can make us all micro machine people and talk really fast. <laughs> yes, put it at two times speed. I'll just, I'll just, uh, you know, add my final comments. You know, is it possible that we won't rec we won't recruit more youth this year than we did last year? It's possible, but I think we're going to recruit better. I think we're going to make stronger packs. I and that's our goal is to build stronger families through scouting. And when we start to build stronger packs using the recruiting process as the driver, we're going to hopefully let more families uh, become stronger through participation in Cub Scouting and then Scouts BSA. Yep, good point. For the longest time, we've always had, and myself included, you know, if we don't get them in the door, there's no chance they'll stay in scouting. I don't disagree with that logic, but when you talk about the amount of effort and energy that it takes uh, to get those folks in the door, and then they walk out the back door or don't even come in the front door. Uh, I just think this is a, a much more sustainable model and it's the future.
to make us help us with stronger packs. We have too many packs that are operating with like three leaders serving 25 people. It, we got to have more folks partner up. All right, I'm going to stop the, if Bert, you let me know if it's okay to stop the recording. That way we can answer any questions specifically at that. Yeah, yeah I think let's, let's stop the recording and then we can have the parking lot conversation here in the Zoom.